My name is Luke. I don't want to say my last name. This encounter with a pair of dogmen happened to me almost 20 years ago, but it's something I can never forget. I don't know if someone would be in their right mind if they could forget something like that. I had dreams about these things for a long time after that. Sometimes they'd be nightmares about them chasing me down the riverbank or even at my home. I'd wake up terrified, drenched in a cold sweat. Other times, I would dream about them and it'd be more of a curious dream where I would be watching them and trying to figure out what they were. For years though, they were always on my mind because I had no idea what they were. It took me a long time to come to terms with what I saw. And even longer than that to start telling people what I saw. But I finally decided that it was time to share my encounter. I'd seen some special on the Discovery Channel or one of those channels that have documentaries on paranormal phenomenon, and I heard about the Michigan Dogman. The description of that thing matched almost identically to what I saw, except the two that I saw were smaller. And this didn't happen in Michigan. It was in Mississippi. So here goes my story. Like I said, I was out fishing, alone. I'd like to go out there just to relax, catch some fish, and enjoy being outside. I was going through some stuff with my wife at the time, and I went out there to get away from the reality of heading towards a divorce. When my encounter happened, it was about 6.30 a.m., and the sun was barely up in the sky. I'd been out there for about an hour already, and I saw these two things run down to the shore. At first, I didn't know what I was looking at. I thought maybe they were some kind of small bear or big wolf. Then I got to looking at these creatures and I realized it wasn't something that I've ever seen before in my entire life. They were both dark brown colors and they looked a lot like a wolf, but the way their front arms moved were more human-like than anything. Honestly, the best description I can give you was that they looked like some kind of small werewolf. They had tails, and they were very bulky, even for their small sizes, like short, buff little creatures. They both had pointy ears on the tops of their heads, and long canine-like muzzles, and I was close enough to where I could see that they had some really sharp teeth in those mouths, but far enough away to where I couldn't make out any precise details like their eye color or anything like that. I was right in the middle of the river, and these two creatures were right on the shore. It looked like they were wrestling each other, to be honest. They would dart back and forth away from each other, like they were playing tag or something. And they'd dodge away and tackle each other, and then kind of roll around. It really reminded me of my two dogs that I have at home. They wrestle around when they're trying to have a good time. Whatever these things were, they were making these yapping and barking noises at each other. And it really looked like they were just having a good time. I don't think they were actually fighting because they weren't acting aggressive towards each other. I sat there watching in confusion and fear because I didn't know what it was that I was looking at. I got this chilling sense of uneasiness though and I could feel the goose pimples go down my spine and the hair on the back of my neck rise up. I wanted to get out of there but I also didn't want to turn on the motor of my boat and alert these things. so. I just sat there, still as a mouse, trying to find out what it was that I was looking at. Honestly, I'm telling you man, the only thing I could think of at that point was a werewolf. I honestly thought I was looking at two werewolves wrestling around on the shore of the river. Then the scariest thing happened. They both stopped playing at the same time. One of them was on its back and rolled to its feet. They started sniffing the air and started looking around like they'd sensed something or smelled something. And then they both looked out at the river, right towards me. Right there, my blood ran cold, man. And I'm pretty sure my heart stopped beating for a few minutes. I knew they spotted me. They looked at me very curiously. Both of their heads tilted to the side. Now, I didn't know if these things could swim at all. All I knew was that they looked like they were built for killing and I didn't want to be on the receiving end of that. At first, when they were staring at me, they were on four legs, but then one of them actually pushed off the ground with its front paws, like it was springing up in the air, 
but then this sucker was standing up on its rear legs. At that point, I dropped my fishing pole. Hell, I almost fell into the damn water. I didn't even realize I was still holding my pole until I heard it clang on the ground. That thing was standing there, looking at me, and now it had this very menacing look on its face. That's when I really thought shit was about to hit the fan. And then the second one did the exact same thing. It pushed off the ground with its hands and stood up to look at me. They walked around for a little bit. These two things walking around on their back legs like it was something natural for them. And they just cast a look at each other and then looked back at me. The stare on these things was enough to make a grown man cry. And now that they were standing up on their back two feet, I got a better look at them. I'm telling you, they look more like a werewolf than anything that I've ever seen in my entire life. I know now that these things are different than werewolves because it's that entity called the Dogman, but back then I didn't know anything about a Dogman. I just knew what these things looked like. When they were standing there, you could see that they were standing on their toes, just like a dog. They weren't flat-footed. Their front arms seemed longer than their back, and they hung down almost to the knees. They were incredibly long. They also looked like they had fingers on them. I could see them in the distance, but it could have just been my imagination. My vision was kind of blurred because I was so scared and the tears were welling up, but I'm pretty damn sure they had fingers on those claws. Their arms just hung to the sides like a human would if it was just standing there looking at something. I'd put them a little shorter than me. I'm only 5 foot 11. I'm not a tall guy. These things I'd say were maybe 5'6". Even though they weren't very tall, seeing something like that walking around on its back legs, looking like something that shouldn't exist, that's still damn tall for a creature like that. Now, I've heard they get bigger, a lot bigger actually, and I'm just glad that these two weren't as big as the ones that a lot of people see, because if they were, I probably would have had a heart attack right there on that boat, and nobody would have ever known what happened to me. So there they are, just staring at me, kind of pivoting from side to side, like they were anticipating charging me or sizing me up or something like that. They'd only move their legs ever so slightly. Most of the time they would just kind of sway back and forth. Very curious like. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I was absolutely terrified. Now, I did some time in the army. I saw some things that I really don't like to talk about to anybody. I know fear. I've been terrified before. But looking at these things, the terror was absolute. It was pure. It was 100% undiluted fear. It was something I've never felt in my entire life before or since seeing these creatures. I knew I had to get out of there. So I slowly moved to the engine and turned it over. When I did, they started making this yapping noise. It wasn't like the noise that they were making before, not when they were playing with each other. This was more like they were communicating with each other. Like they were about to go on a hunt. Tears actually started coming to my eyes and soon they were leaking down my face. I don't have any shame in admitting how scared I was. I did the only thing I could do since I was out in the middle of the water. I sped through that water trying to get out of there as fast as I could. I looked back and these things were chasing me on the shore. They were following me, but they were back on all fours. They were running, and damn, they were fast. I was gaining ground, but just looking back and seeing how agile they were, it was like something out of this world. They would dart around logs or leap over them, and man, these things can jump. They can jump like nothing. And the whole time they were chasing me, they were making that noise. Eventually, thanks to the Lord Almighty, I gained enough ground to where they must have lost interest in me. 
I watched them stop and stare at me. Then they trotted back into the trees on all fours. I never got my boat out of the water so fast. Luckily, I was at an area where my truck could go right down to the shore and I could put the boat back up on the trailer. If I thought I was scared when I was in the middle of the water, looking at these things from the safety of my boat, getting my boat and getting into the truck was a terror that I can't even describe. I was on extreme high alert. I was looking around constantly, making sure that these things were going to jump out and attack me from the woods. Oddly enough, the thing that I kept thinking about the whole time was that scene in Jurassic Park where that guy is hunting one of them dinosaurs and he thinks that he's got it in its sights, only for the other dinosaur to come out from the side of the jungle and attack and kill him. I thought that maybe they'd come out at me from both sides and spring a trap. I was praying to God the whole time, promising to never drink again, promising to make amends with my wife, promising all kinds of things. I can honestly say that since I got out of there alive, I kept my word to the Lord. Alcohol hasn't touched my lips since that day. Me and my wife are still happily married and we worked through all our problems. She was the first person that I told about this. And just seeing how scared I was, I think made her forget how mad we were at each other. I really feel like I survived something that could have ended very, very badly that day. I had a little bit of post-traumatic stress about it. Like I said, I had a lot of nightmares, but I think I've dealt with it as best as I could. Looking back on this, I've made some theories about what I encountered that day. I know they were dogmen, but my theory is that they were just juveniles and the way they were playing around was some kind of training exercise that they used to learn how to attack their prey. I think they were learning how to tackle and learning how to fight. When they saw me, I think they were curious enough to follow me because maybe they thought I was easy prey. Believe me, if these two things got a hold of me, I would have been easy prey. But here's the scary part that I think about all the time. Obviously, they were small, so they were just juveniles, right? That means there's at least two more of those things out there, right? I mean, they didn't just pop into existence out of nowhere. Something had to create them. There has to be a breeding pair of animals somewhere to create these two juveniles, right? Needless to say, I never went back there, and I never go anywhere into the woods alone anymore, or without a firearm. The people that I do share this with have seemed pretty confident that I'm not telling a lie. They know I'm an honest man, and that I wouldn't make something up so incredible for no reason at all. I also have a theory why there's no proof of these animals. I think it's because they're so intelligent. They know how to cover their tracks. They know how to stay away from cameras. They look very intelligent, just the way they were watching me. They look very capable of hiding when they need to, too. They also looked 100% lethal. They looked like a damn killing machine. I don't know where they came from. I don't know if they're a natural species or if they're from some other dimension, or if they're even demons incarnate, but I know that they're real. I know what I saw, and I don't care who believes me. I just want to get my encounter out there so people know that there really are things out there that science has no explanation for. I've told my kids this, and they've told their children, because one, we need to respect the forest, but we also need to be on high alert, making sure that things like that, that are out there, don't attack and kill us. We tend to stay into the cities now. We only go into the forest if we absolutely have to. Luckily, my kids aren't big campers and they prefer their technology over the forest. I don't know how worried I'd be if I knew they were out there in the forest somewhere with those things potentially out there stalking them. God bless you all. Luke. <laughs> I grew up in the state of Michigan, in a town called Port Austin. 
It's a small town with not too much to do besides cruise the mom and pop shops or head over to the diner in the center of town to check out some cool classic cars at the show they held once a week. Whenever I had the chance, I would go to my father's cabin in a neighboring city called Grindstone. It was a small country town with nothing much but woods and farmland, but it was perfect for hunting and fishing. At the time I was 14 years old and went up for the weekend with my older brother, a Marine straight out of Iraq. He's tough as nails. He wasn't afraid of anything, but that day I'd see a side of him that I wouldn't soon forget. We took the one ATV that we owned and headed out into a cornfield that has an abandoned farmhouse on it. The cornfield opens up to a clearing and beyond that is dense woods. To set the scene, we'd gone out there to do some pheasant hunting. We entered from the other side that has a smaller, more open woodsy area. There's a trail where we parked the ATV and that leads to the cornfield. We headed out there fairly late, about 4 p.m., because we were fishing earlier that day. We hadn't had much luck either way, so we were deciding to head back around 7 o'clock that night. We were inside that abandoned farmhouse, and while I was exploring, my brother sat down on an old chair for a cigarette. He called me over to the front to check something out. His face was pale, and he choked on his words. Come look at this. I looked to where he was looking and there seemed to be this huge wolf about 300 yards in a clearing ahead of us, and it was standing on two legs. This thing was massive and covered in thick black fur. I couldn't really see how tall it was from the distance that I was at, but the front legs looked huge and muscular with this oddly shaped torso and long slender hind legs, like a werewolf. My brother told me to grab one of the shotguns, and when it heard him speak, it turned and looked right at us. It looked like it was glaring at us. It took a few steps on its hind legs, then went down on all fours and darted into the cornfield in the direction that our four-wheeler was in. The sun was setting and it was starting to get dark. We decided to enter the cornfield from the furthest end that that thing went into. We had to get to our ATV and get out of there. I was on flashlight duty. My brother walked ahead of me with his shotgun and the entire time, I felt like we were being watched. I swear, I heard nearby rustling and low growls or snarls. I heard this every time we stopped. What should have been a 10 minute walk felt like it took an hour. I was so scared the whole time. We made it to the trail with the ATV and I started to calm down now that I could see my surroundings a little better. But that's when branches and twigs started snapping and they sounded like it was doing so under the weight of something heavy. And then, something big started moving in the cornfield. I shone the flashlight on a patch of stalks where I thought I heard the movement coming from, and I saw this pair of yellow reflective eyes about six feet off the ground. They were looking at us through the cracks in the corn stalks. My brother started yelling at it, and then it let out this loud, eerie howl that sounded like it was right in my ear. My brother fired a shotgun once at the tops of the stalks and told me to run to the ATV and get it started. He stood there standing guard with the shotgun while I did. I did as I was told, and when I felt my brother jump on the back after me, I punched the throttle and floored it to the access road and onto the main road that cuts through town. I only looked back once, but when I did, I saw this huge black mass dart across the road quickly from out of the cornfield into the darkness of the woods. It looked like it was on four legs, but it was too large to be anything that I could identify easily. We headed back to our house in town that night and didn't return till about noon the next day to collect our things from the cabin. When we did, we still had our weapons with us and we were both very unnerved. I had always heard the rumors of the Michigan Dogman, but I thought they were just old wives tales like the Boogeyman that my dad would tell me to scare me straight as a child or maybe even some urban legend like the skunk ape or chupacabra. Now I know otherwise. My brother and I still talk about it to this day over beers, but it was definitely a scary experience for both of us because when we talk about it, we still get kind of freaked out. I still go out there and hunt to this day, but I haven't seen anything since. And honestly, I hope I don't ever see it again. Some nights when I'm at my grandma's house, I feel the sudden urge to explore the ruins of this farmhouse. When I inherit that land, 
I might have to go out there and do an investigation, but honestly, I'm not sure I'll be comfortable with what I might find. This encounter happened many years ago when I was 15 years old. I only recently started reading information on the internet describing this creature, and now I have a desire to tell my story. This encounter happened at my grandparents' lake cabin south of Danbury, Wisconsin, east of Highway 35 around Devil's Lake. My background has always been the great outdoors, playing and exploring in the woods. During this time period, I was very comfortable going out by myself for all day adventures. On the night of this encounter, I'd gone to sleep around 10 p.m. It was in the summer, so there was no school. This night was warm, so I had the bedroom window slightly cracked for some air circulation and to hear the crickets and outside noises. This would always put me to sleep because like I said, I'm very comfortable in the woods and nothing was out of the ordinary that night. I was just getting ready for a peaceful sleep listening to the sounds of the night. Now at the time, my grandparents' bedroom was on the other side of the cabin. They also had a black Labrador retriever that always slept in my room, but later on, I'd find that he wasn't in my room at all. I'd fallen asleep like I always did in that cabin. Hours later, I never exactly knew what time it was, but I knew it was late because everyone else was asleep. But hours later, I suddenly awoke feeling something was wrong. Still being groggy, the first thing I noticed was that nothing outside was making any noise at all. No crickets, frogs, whippoorwills, nothing but total silence. I held my breath for a moment, thinking that this was very odd. I was listening very carefully. I moved my head to see the door of the bedroom. The nightlight from the hallway was giving a slight glow, and I could see that my grandparents' dog was not laying in the normal spot on the floor, or any place in my room, as a matter of fact. I guess maybe two or three minutes passed, and then I heard it. A sound that sounded to me like a raccoon or some other animal scratching the outside of the cabin. This continued, and my mind wondered what the heck could be out there making that noise. It was still totally silent, except for that one scratching noise that began to move down the wall, closer to the window of the bedroom. So, naturally, I turned my attention towards the window. It was very dark outside, but I could still make out the slight silhouette of the trees and the branches up high. All at once, the scratching stopped. I strained to adjust my eyes, and that's when it stepped out of the shadows and blocked out the view of the trees. This thing was huge. No animal I knew of, or could even imagine, was standing right there, blocking my view. I couldn't make out any features of its body, but I could see the distinct ears of a canine on a large head. Then I saw its eyes and was paralyzed with this overwhelming fear. It looked like it was hunched down, looking right into the window. Its eyes were glowing this amber color, and it was blinking at me. My mind was racing. Can it see me? What's going on? What am I going to do? A chill went down my spine. I could hear this thing breathing. It let out an exhale that was deep, but not overly loud. Then it began to sniff the air. I could hear it clearly since I was only 10 to 12 feet away from it. About what I would guess 30 seconds elapsed, which felt like forever to me, but looking back, it was not much time at all. Then the creature began to show its teeth almost like a grin of satisfaction that it had scared me so badly. Time really felt like it stood still, and then this thing stood up off its haunches, erect like a man, and walked off on two legs, away from the window in the direction of the lake. I knew this was my chance. I had to get out of that bed. I jumped out and into the hallway, away from the window, and began to breathe heavy, because I think I held my breath for so long. I looked into the living room, and I could see the dog standing totally still, in a rigid posture, hair standing on end, and he was growling slightly while looking at the deck window. I moved over to the hall closet and grabbed the 20 gauge shotgun that was in there and loaded it. It was only a single shot, but it was better than nothing. I thought to myself while I was trying to catch my breath that if this thing wanted to come into the house, it could easily do it by breaking the glass on the patio deck. If it did that, I'd have no place to go, because I'd be trapped between my bedroom and the patio window to my grandparents' room. That's where my grandfather had a deer rifle that I could get to, but if it did break through that window, 
my chances of getting to that rifle would be slim to none before it tore me apart. So I stood, waiting for around five minutes. Nothing happened though. The dog even seemed to calm down, and walked over to me and sat down wanting to get his head scratched. I thought about waking my grandparents and telling them what I saw, but at the time I didn't think they'd believe me. After all, I couldn't even believe it myself. So I calmed down and went back into my bedroom, pulled the covers off the bed and slept on the floor with the gun and the dog at the ready. I was in half sleep for the rest of the night. This encounter scared me so bad that I didn't even want to get close to the window to shut it. I left it there all night for fear that that thing would come back, reach in and grab me. I waited until dawn before I closed and locked it. Once daylight was in full force, I went outside to see if I could find any scratches on the wall or anything else, like footprints for example. I didn't find anything at all and was starting to wonder if I was just going crazy. No, that thing was real. I was certain of it. I continued to sleep on the floor for about a week before I felt that it was okay to sleep in my bed again, but that window stayed closed and locked ever since. I haven't had any encounters with the dogman after that incident, and the memory was pushed out of my mind until recently. I was reading some encounters, and I saw that two other people had an encounter in the same area as me. When I saw this, I decided it was okay to share my experience because it was a point of fact that I was not crazy. You don't know what true primal fear is until you see one of these things, and you're face to face with them. All I know is I never want to experience it again. I'm still not sure what a dogman really even is, and the only thing that I could tell you for certain is that this really happened to me, and it happened in Burnett County, Wisconsin. Thank you for sharing this story with everybody. I hope you have a good night. Here's my encounter in the best details I could remember. I'm not going to tell you my name or exactly where this happened, but it happened to me in New York. I'm an outdoor enthusiast. I enjoy hiking, fishing, rock climbing, and just about anything you can enjoy while being outdoors. I was a Boy Scout, and then later in life I took on the responsibility of teaching kids survival skills, so I'm very acclimated to the woods and all the creatures. But when you have an encounter as terrifying as I did, nothing and I mean nothing, could prepare you or your mind to handle what I am about to tell you. It was early summer and I was going on a solo fishing trip to spend the day at one of my favorite spots. It's about a 45 minute hike up a beautiful mountain and it's also not very well known, a gem of sorts. Only the locals seem to be aware of this. I'd been there for about three hours and caught one keeper and was having a really good day. But then I started to hear what I presumed was another person walking up behind me. I thought it odd since I came here often and I'm almost always the only one here. But I thought, well, I guess I'm not the only one that knows this spot exists. My name is Brad and I'm 24 years old. This happened to me when I was 17, and it changed the way that I look at the world forever. I'm from Quebec in Canada, and I come from a large family. I'm the third oldest of a family of eight kids, and I was born and raised out in the woods. That's just something you really need to get used to if you're going to live in Quebec. We have a lot of forest where I'm at. My family has a rather large piece of land here in Quebec. It equals about 75 acres and butts up to one of the most beautiful forests that you'll ever see. At any given time, there are all kinds of animals coming through our property. Things like deer, raccoons, porcupines, moose, foxes, and all kinds of birds can regularly be seen there. We even get bears and wolves out here. And I guess that's where our story starts. We thought it was a rogue wolf that was causing all the carnage around our property. We'd found a deer that was torn apart halfway between our house and the forest. It looked pretty nasty. It was gutted, but it also looked like it was chewed on, and the throat was ripped out. It had these large gashes on the sides, and most of the meat around the torso and the gut were gone. We had a dog that was attacked by something too, and it was so bad, we had to euthanize. That really messed me up. 
I was determined to solve the problem, and I decided to spend the evening and the night out in a blind that we have on our property. It was freezing out, but I had my dog on my mind, and I wanted to take down whatever had hurt him. For the record, his name was Maximus, and he was a German Shepherd Labrador mix. He was three years old, a big guy, and in the prime of his life. I say this to put into perspective how well he could have handled himself. Something big was out there that hurt him. I was sure that it was a wolf that was causing all of this. And lucky for me, it was during the weeks that you could trap and kill them. I guess I wasn't exactly wrong about what killed Max, but I wasn't exactly right either though. So I went out that night. It was a Friday after school, and I'd planned to stay out there all weekend if I needed to. I was up in the stand facing the direction that we found the deer, but I hadn't seen anything at all. This was really weird because, like I said, some kind of animal could always be seen there, no matter what type it is. And it was actually really, really eerily quiet while I was out there too. It was almost night by now, and I could hear the stream in the distance, but really no other animals were making noise. Soon that water out there would be freezing, but for now, it was just a calming noise. I sat there, and I thought of Max and how tough it might be to kill whatever killed him. It was just to the point though where I was starting to doubt that I'd see anything out there at all when I heard some noises further towards the forest and down this sloping area of a hill that we have. I stopped and listened, and the only way I could describe it is this yapping noise. It didn't sound very much like a wolf at all. It sounded more like a coyote. I guessed to myself that a coyote might have been able to take on Max. Coyotes were trouble in my eyes. It sounded like one single coyote. So I thought to myself, well, at least that would make my job easier. It was too close to my house either way, whether it be a coyote or a wolf. I had really young siblings that I had to worry about. Whatever it was needed to meet its end, and I was determined to be the one to do that. To protect my little siblings and to get revenge for Max. I couldn't see whatever it was from where I was at, so I got down from the blind and started walking towards the noises, trying to be as quiet as possible. I know, going off in the direction of some kind of animal that's big enough to kill my dog probably wasn't the smartest idea, but I was 17, determined to kill whatever this thing was, and I couldn't stop thinking about Max. I wanted to be the hero. I wanted to bag this creature, take it home and let my little siblings know that there was nothing to worry about. But when I got to where I needed to be, my blood ran cold. It wasn't a coyote. It wasn't even a wolf. It wasn't anything I had ever seen in my entire life, except maybe on TV. I mean, this thing looked like a classic werewolf. It was standing on two legs and it was about six feet tall, just a little bit taller than I was. Now I know, that's not as big as most encounters with a dog man, but I dare you not to shit your pants if you saw something like this, mere yards away from you, no matter how big or small it was. This thing was covered in hair, and it had muscles on top of muscles. The hair was black and shaggy. The arms looked more muscular than the bodybuilders I've seen on TV, and the legs were even more muscular than that. I mean, this thing looked seriously roided out. It looked like a werewolf that I'd seen in the Underworld movies. Big and buff. The head of this thing was enormous too, and it looked just like a wolf's head. It had a big muzzle and pointed ears, and it looked like it was standing the way that a dog does, on its toes as opposed to being flat-footed. And the way that it was moving seemed thought out like it was trying to hide itself from being in plain sight. There were trees and bushes that this thing would kind of jog through, and then it would stop, and then do it again. This thing just seemed very intelligent, in my opinion. To be completely honest, I've never been so scared in my entire life. I had no idea what I was seeing, and I was out there all alone. My parents knew that I was out there, and didn't expect me back for at least the night. 
I could feel my heart beating in my ears. I was hiding behind a tree, watching what I thought was a werewolf walking around on our property. If I hadn't been so scared, I would have sworn that I was dreaming. But still, even through all that fear, I knew I had to do something because it was so close to our home. I was trying to build up the courage to shoot this thing when it must have smelled me or something because it started letting out this low growling noise. And then as the growling intensified, this thing looked right towards my direction. It saw me because for some reason I froze and I couldn't dart behind the tree again. This thing bared its teeth at me like it was growling and trying to be intimidating but it also looked like it was smiling at me. It was the weirdest thing, on top of being the scariest thing that I've ever experienced. At that point, I think my heart just stopped beating altogether. This thing's eyes looked like they were glowing this sickening yellow or orange color, and it was just standing perfectly still, staring at me. I could see the chest going in and out as it panted. Man, I knew. I was screwed. This thing started walking towards me, still on two feet, and the way it moved on those two legs seemed completely 100% natural. Now, I take pride in being tough and knowing how to survive on the outdoors, but I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I was so scared that I started to cry. Still, like I said, I knew what I had to do. Even through my tears and my fear, I raised my rifle, thinking of my siblings and Max, and I fired directly at that thing. I hit it in the chest, and it staggered back. I know I hit it because of the way that it moved. But as it staggered back, it let out the worst scream that I've ever heard in my whole damn life. When it screamed, I think I might have screamed a little bit too. I was so scared and caught off guard that I couldn't help myself. The fear that I felt was just so intense and so real. It turned my blood to ice, and it made even more tears flow from my eyes. Even though I knew this thing was wounded, it still started coming towards me again, although this time it was breaking out into a run. I aimed for the head this time, but before I could even pull the trigger, this thing leapt off to the side and took off towards the tree line, now on all fours. The way that it moved from two legs to four legs was just so fluid that I don't think anything could ever do that if it wanted to, besides something like this werewolf that I saw. I know I keep using the term werewolf when I should be using the term dogman, but I can't help myself. That's exactly how I describe it, like a werewolf. As it ran, it made this loping motion kind of like a hyena, and the way it moved was like lightning. I've never seen something move so fast in my whole life. I didn't know if I scared it away, or if it recognized a gun, because it sure as hell seemed to, or if it knew that it was wounded and I was going to shoot it again. But whatever the reason, it ran off in the other direction. I watched it go, dumbfounded, and I think in shock, and then I reloaded my rifle. I was suddenly very aware that I had no idea where this thing went and that I was very alone out there. It was one of those times where you're so scared you can barely breathe. My breath was catching in my throat and I felt like I was going to pass out. I was shaking, I was so scared. But I also think it could have been the adrenaline that I was feeling. Like a miracle though, I saw headlights coming down the dirt road that we used to get back to our house and realized it was my dad. I swear, I've never ran so fast in my life. The speed that I was running in that moment, I bet you I could have given that damn dog man a run for its money. It turned out, my dad was looking for me because he heard something running around by our house and it sounded heavy and he was worried about me. I am 100% sure that what he heard was that thing walking around outside of our house before I found it in the field. On the way back, I told him everything that I saw, and he asked me a ton of questions about what it was and what it looked like and where it went. I answered everything as best as I could, 
and after a really long, awkward silence, my dad took his hat off, took this really deep breath, and just stared in front of him for a while. Then he looked over at me and told me, as incredible as my story was, he believed me. I actually hugged him and thanked him for being such a great dad and having faith in me. The next morning we went looking for that thing. We had some of his friends, my older brother, and we were all armed. We didn't find anything though. I don't know if that's because it's only like that at night, or because it ran off, or because it died somewhere. It's something I'll never forget though. I never saw it again, but it's something that I'll never ever forget. I live in this town in Wisconsin that's pretty famous for finding dogman encounters. I'm not going to tell you exactly where because I don't want people coming and searching for these things. I believe they're pretty dangerous and I don't want anybody getting hurt. I haven't had an encounter myself, but sometimes at night I hear these howls or maybe even more like screams. They don't sound like they belong on this earth, but they sound like it could be a mixture of a man and an animal but not really either. It's hard to explain. It's like a scream, but also like it's trying to communicate with something. I do have a family friend that encountered the dog man. I don't know all of the story, but I will try to get it for you. I know some of it, and I'll tell you it. I'm also going to look around my town, seeing if I can find out other people's encounters. That way I can give them to you, and you can put it right here on your channel. As for my family friend's story, she was driving to work one day, and she saw somebody walking on the opposite side of the fence near her. Well, she thought it was somebody at first, until she got closer and realized that not only was this thing really tall, too tall to be a man, but it also looked like an animal. It had fur covering its body and a big snout. It looked over at her and snarled. She said it had huge teeth. That's all I know. Like I said, I'll try to get more specifics for you. But she did speed out of there and tell everybody at work what she saw. Of course, most people didn't believe her, but there are other people that did. Those are the people I think I want to talk to to try to get encounters from them too. I hope I can help you out. Hello, my name is Shannon. I saw the dog man. It was a couple of days ago. My brother and I decided to walk my dog during the night towards a bridge near our house. I really don't like going outside at night, but my brother convinced me to walk at least down to the bridge, so I agreed. As we were walking down the road, I stopped at the sound of dog footsteps behind us. Now, my brother doesn't believe in mythical creatures like Bigfoot and the Dogman. But when I turned around, something dove into the side pasture that had a line of trees, and chills ran down my spine. My brother turned and looked at me and asked if I was okay. I told him we should probably get going back because I had to get up early in the morning. He agreed and we turned around. On the way back to the house, I kept shining my flashlight at the spot where it jumped into the trees, and I saw two yellow eyes, glowing, looking back at me. And then it looked like it was watching my brother, because it appeared to turn its head. The fur was dark brown, and it had a German Shepherd-like head. It didn't growl or show its teeth. This thing was just really curious about us. Ever since that night, I can hear howls in the distance in the direction of the bridge. We have two big dogs, and they go crazy, not acting like themselves. They growl and bark. I think it's a warning for us to stay inside the house, and it's a warning that I listen to. My boyfriend has had an encounter with the dog man too, but let me start from the beginning. It was three hours earlier, and we had just got done eating, and we decided to walk down to that same bridge. 
We did a few Bigfoot calls, and I kept on hearing growling coming back at us. Now my boyfriend, he's half deaf, so I was the only one that could hear the sounds coming and going. When I started to feel a sense of something watching us, I told him we needed to leave. He kept on asking me what was wrong, and when we got back to the house, that's when I saw something standing in the pasture next to an old metal broken down building. It looked to be about nine feet tall, with the same brownish fur. I told my boyfriend to be careful when he was driving home, because I thought I had seen something in the back pasture, which was next to my room. When he left, he went towards the bridge, and he saw the creature too. It was on its hind legs. It came up to the car, and it was sniffing the air. It snarled, and then took off after a deer that had ran across the road. The next morning, he checked his car for any marks, and there were tons of claw marks on the back of the car, and on the side. I've read a lot of encounters that happen just like mine. Well, not exactly like mine, but enough to where they resemble a pattern to me. I wonder if this is a hunting tactic for these things. The way it ran off after I scared it makes me think not, but the way it charged me before that makes me think so. The fact that this thing was eating roadkill makes me think that maybe there's some type of scavenger, or at least an opportunistic eater. What happened to me and my son is something that I will never ever forget, and still ten years later gives me nightmares occasionally. Nightmares of a werewolf type creature that is hunting us and is thirsty for blood. My name is Alice. I'm not going to share my last name with you. My son's name is Jonathan. This happened to us ten years ago, and we were driving from Minnesota up to Canada. I'm not too sure the exact location because we've been driving a lot that day and we were still a few hours away from the border. My son at the time was 14 years old, and it was just the two of us in the car when it happened. As we were driving, it wasn't dark yet, but it was getting there, so I was driving with my lights on already. I needed to be cautious around these forest roads because of all the wildlife that can run out in front of you. I had already hit a deer once a few years back, and this made me extra cautious, especially since we were out in the middle of nowhere and I didn't want to get stranded out in the forest in the dark. We were coming around this turn, and I was going pretty slowly as to avoid hitting anything that could run out in front of us. I guess you could say I'm a pretty paranoid driver. We saw this animal on the road. It was hunched over what I assume was roadkill, and it was eating it. It was facing us, but its head was down, chewing on whatever it was that was in the road. The first thing I noticed was the size of this creature. It was very large, even for a bear. It was very bulky, and even from the distance we were at, I could see that it had a very muscular body. It was just a very odd looking creature. Jonathan was very confused too, and asked me what it was. There was something in his voice that sounded like a mixture of curiosity and fear. I just assumed it was some kind of animal, and slowly kept going forward. I wasn't afraid. Yet. We were probably 60 feet away from this creature or so, but getting closer, although we were moving pretty slowly. I have to admit, at this point I was curious about what this creature could be, and I guess I kind of wanted to watch it in its natural environment. I was still just assuming it was some kind of wolf or bear, perhaps just a large specimen. This thing just kept eating though. It acted like it either didn't notice us, or didn't care that the car was approaching. Maybe it knew because of its size and ferocity that we weren't a threat to it. Maybe it was just waiting for us to get close enough to attack us. Then I noticed the shape of this thing too. It was oddly human in the way that it was moving and the way that the arms were crouched down on the ground. It looked to me like it was holding the carcass as opposed to pinning it down and chewing on it. What kind of large carnivore does that? It was just very odd behavior. I guess that's when I started to get this sense of uneasiness. It was like this sense of dread or something was just boiling up inside my stomach and spreading throughout my body. I could tell my son was feeling the same way, because he was usually Mr. Chatterbox. 
Now, though, he was very quiet and focused on the creature in front of us. When this thing finally did take notice of us, it looked up, and I had the realization that we were in terrible danger. We were witnessing a creature that was neither a bear nor a wolf, and might be something I couldn't identify at all. For starters, it did look very canine in appearance, but if it was a canine, it had to be the largest wolf ever recorded. It had large canine ears and a canine-like snout. It had a wet nose and a big muzzle, but the muzzle was covered in blood. I assume this is from the roadkill, but to this day, maybe that's just the excuse I tell myself to explain the blood, if not for anything else, but to make myself feel better about it. The head of this thing was massive. It had to be twice the size of any wolf that I'd ever seen in real life or on TV. And it had eyes that reflected my headlights. The eyes themselves looked creepy because they looked very intelligent and they had this unnatural shine to them, almost like they were emitting a glowing from themselves. I thought to myself, maybe it's just some extremely large deformed wolf, but in retrospect, I think that was probably just my brain trying to comfort me during this dreadful encounter. What happened next made me realize that this was not a wolf at all. In fact, it wasn't any real animal at all. It could only be a creature from my worst nightmares because this thing stood up on two legs. The way it did this was very natural. It just stood up. I've read some reports of these things moving in awkward movements while they're on two legs, but I assure you, this thing seemed perfectly capable of being on two legs. Believe me. It looked right at us, and it stared into the windshield. At that point, it felt like all the air was sucked out of the car and I could only take small, terrified breaths. It was standing there, with its hands down at its sides, clutching this carcass. Whatever the carcass was, I'll never be able to identify, because this thing was so torn up. But this creature was holding in its hand nonetheless. It wasn't a paw. It was actually gripping this chunk of meat, like only a human could do. This thing had prominent hands. The feet on the back legs were more canine-like. It didn't look like they had fingers, merely just paws. Both of us started yelling, trying to figure out what this thing was, and we were definitely both in a state of hysteria. I've never heard Jonathan use words like that. I think this thing was female because of the anatomy. I'm pretty sure I saw a pronounced breast in the chest area, almost like a gorilla. This thing was enormous. It was covered in thick, shaggy gray fur, but in the chest area, the fur seemed slightly less shaggy, and because of that, I could make out that definite breast pattern. It looked to me like it was standing on its toes, like a dog would, but the legs were just so muscular. Even the front arms were extremely muscular. It looked like this thing would have no problem taking on anything in that forest, or lifting anything that was very heavy. The hair on the legs looked shaggier than the arms, but the shaggiest portion of this thing was around the shoulders and the head. It almost had the appearance of a mane. It probably stood eight feet tall. Like I said, everything about this creature was enormous. We actually had to look up out of the windshield to see this thing in the face. You asked me if I saw a tail, but unfortunately, I didn't see any type of anatomy on its back. For a long moment, it felt like I couldn't move, like I was trapped in this creature's gaze. It stared right through the windshield at us. Jonathan was screaming for me to drive away, to get away from this thing, because he thought that it was some kind of werewolf. Honestly, when he was screaming, it sounded like he was so far away from me, even though he was sitting right next to me in the car. I have to admit, I was so terrified, I was frozen. I couldn't decide whether to pop it in reverse and drive backwards to try to get away, or slam on the gas and try to blow past it. This thing looked like it could catch up to us regardless. It snarled at us, and I could see its teeth glistening from inside its mouth. There were so many teeth in there that were sharp, that it was so unnatural. After it snarled, it flung its arm up, and the carcass that it was holding flew through the air and hit our windshield. I remember the blood and flesh bits clinging to the window as both of us screamed even louder. I think this was a diversion. It wanted to distract us because what it did next 
was charge at us. I knew I had to do something at that point. I knew I had to swallow my fear and save my son and myself. The only thing I could think of was his safety. I started laying on the horn and flashing my high beams at it to try and deter it from attacking us. The way this thing moved, it's indescribable. It was so incredibly fast, especially because of the strides it was taking. They were so large. I was screaming and I finally decided to slam on the gas and if I had to, run this damn thing over. By the grace of God, what I did worked. As I was laying on the horn and flying towards this thing, it actually covered its ears with its hands. It was intelligent enough to cover its frigging ears. Then it pivoted and darted diagonally into the woods and off of the road. I watched as it darted through the trees and it was still booking it on two legs. Yeah, this thing was definitely capable on two legs. Jonathan kept yelling to drive, just yelling over and over, Mom, drive, Mom, get out of here, Mom, we have to get out of here. I was still in shock, but I continued to keep my foot pressed down on the gas as hard as I could, and we drove as fast as we could out of there. I threw caution to the wind, not even taking into consideration that some other type of animal, or even this thing, could dart out into the road again, and I would run into it and total my car, and then we'd be trapped out in the forest with this creature. As much as I could, I would glance back into my rear view, making sure that this thing wasn't following us. I was crying and had to keep blinking to get the tears out of my eyes so I could see well enough to drive. Jonathan was crying too. The only fact that I could take comfort in was when I did look through the rear view, every time that thing wasn't behind us. We drove for over an hour making sure that that thing was nowhere near us before we stopped. We finally stopped at a gas station and sat in the car and just sobbed together for the longest time. We ended up checking into a hotel that night because we were too scared and tired to continue on our journey. Even though we said we weren't hungry, we ate a lot that night. We felt relatively safe in the hotel, but there was still no chance in hell that either of us would be catching any sleep that night. So the two of us just stayed up through the night talking about what we'd just witnessed and what it could have been. At the time, we had no idea what a dogman was and just assumed that we'd encountered some type of werewolf. But now, after reading a lot of encounters, the two of us firmly believe it was a dogman that we saw that night. We've never been back in that area. Like I said, I'm not even really sure which patch of highway this was on. We did drive for a really long time that day and for the days before that. We were out in the middle of nowhere. I have no idea where we were. But as a rule, we've never driven through any part of upper Minnesota just because we don't want to take a chance of encountering a thing like that in the forest again. Because of that encounter, I actually got a CCW, just in case. And I still think about this encounter quite frequently. When I do have dreams of it, I wake up in a cold sweat. And for the next couple of days, I'm on edge. And I can't stop thinking about that creature. What are they? What do they want? Thank you for your time. My story takes place a couple years ago when I was 16. Me and my two friends, Alan and Phil, were walking home from a party at a house one time. It was around one in the morning and the party was located at the end of a long stretch of desolate dirt road. None of us had put any thought into how we would make it home because Alan's mom was staying at her brother's because he was ill, and my parents would have already been fast asleep at this point. Being reckless teenagers, I made sure that we had snuck out of the house to go to the party anyways, so nobody even knew that we were there. The walk would take us about an hour and a half, but none of us had the foresight to leave the party early. The moon provided some light as we walked, so I could see the silhouettes of the trees and bushes. But the moon kept disappearing behind the clouds in the sky, so every once in a while, it would get a lot darker. We talked and laughed at the situation as we walked home. We were being careful to stay away from patches of mud. Suddenly, Alan stopped 
and just stood there staring out into the fields. And he asked, guys, did you see that? We asked what he was talking about, thinking that he was just playing a trick on us. He told us that he swears that something moved out in the field. I didn't believe him. I told him he was just seeing things and reminded him that we really needed to get home. Phil started to walk off and I followed suit. And then I heard Alan's footsteps pick up behind us. We walked a little longer, just chatting and laughing. But then we stopped when we started hearing noises from the side of us. That could really kill the mood. I'm not going to pretend that what he said didn't get to me. And in fact, I kept looking around, trying to catch up a glimpse of this animal or thing in the darkness around us. This meant I was walking significantly slower than Phil and Alan. In fact, I was walking so slow, and they were so far in front of me, that I could only see their silhouettes in the darkness. Then all of a sudden, I heard maybe a stick or something break to my right side in the same field that Alan had his sighting. I continued walking with my hair standing on end, and then there was some rustling in the bushes following me as I walked. I looked at the bushes and saw a pair of glowing yellow eyes looking back at me. Now let me tell you this. When I saw those eyes, I was paralyzed with fear. And then this thing started to rise out of the bushes. The moon wasn't behind the clouds at this point, and it illuminated the creature that was standing in front of me. It had black matted fur all over its body. Its arms reached down to its knees. When it stood fully erect, it towered over me, about eight feet tall. Its fingers were these long, thin, clawed things. They weren't any paws. Those things looked like they could rip something apart with ease. It stood up and this grotesque body rippled as the muscles stretched. The face was the worst part though. It looked like an ugly human but like it was mixed with a dog or another member of the canine family. I'm not ashamed to say that I screamed and I ran to catch up to my friends as fast as I could. I passed both of them and started yelling loudly to run. I yelled as loud as I could and ran as fast as I could. I didn't even care if my lungs were burning. It felt like this thing was following me as I sprinted down the road past my friends and all the way back home. I didn't want to look back. I could hear something crunching behind me, but I didn't want to look back. We only slowed down when we got to my neighborhood. We went to the back door of my house and went straight into the living room to look out from the window. They kept asking me what it was that I saw, but I was too scared to relive that moment and describe what it was. I just told them it was a monster. They laughed at me at first, but Looking at my expression, they knew that the fear that I was feeling was absolutely real, and I wasn't pranking them. They never saw it. They don't know how scary it was. We didn't sleep that night, and a lot later in the night, we heard a howling coming from behind our house. But that's not even the worst part of all of this, because we weren't the last to leave the party. Alan got a phone call the next morning from Jonathan, who was the guy that threw the party. And he was asking if we saw a girl named Ellie, who left the party just after us. Apparently, she hadn't returned home yet. As far as I know, she never did, because I never actually saw Ellie again. As far as I know, nobody has. I honestly believe that the thing that I saw that night got her. I grew up in a sunshine state, living in the capital of Tallahassee. It was nice, and I enjoyed spending time in my childhood there. That is until it happened a few years back. It forced me to move as soon as possible. It all started back in January of 2017. I was 16 years old, and a few weeks after landing my first job at a local Chick-fil-A. I enjoyed working there, and I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a job. One night, I had to work from 4 to 11 p.m. I was getting trained to close the different stations and things like that. Usually, we close at 10, 
but we don't get out of there till 11, so we have to clean up and close up. Then we can go home for the night. The closing shift consists of cleaning the dishes, grills, fryers, floors, and everything else. As I was 16, due to child labor laws, I had to leave right at 11 p.m., as did most of my other co-workers. I finished up, clocked out, and walked to my car in the parking lot behind the restaurant, since we're not allowed to park in front of the customers. I got in my car and drove down the main road. My house was around 20 minutes away from the restaurant, but since it was 11 p.m., there weren't many cars out. I'd usually take about 15 minutes if I worked this late. I was on the main road for a few minutes, and then I turned onto a road that I normally use as a shortcut. This was a darker road, and it was curvy, and it didn't have many street lights. To make things even creepier, this road had a large cemetery that really creeped me out. The few times I've driven on this road, I've heard what sounded like screams coming from the direction of the cemetery. I swear. Maybe I was just tired these times. Anyway, I was driving down the road with my brights on when a large dark figure ran out in front of me. Of course, I slammed on the brakes. Luckily, I didn't hit it. I came to a sudden and violent stop and my heart was pounding so hard in my chest that I had trouble calming myself down. I looked around to see what it was that I nearly hit, and I did see it. The two of us locked eyes, staring unblinkingly at each other. This thing was huge. It was some kind of creature that I didn't have words for. Seven or eight feet tall, at least, and it had a large masculine body. It was toned and thick. It had a canine-shaped head with pointy ears and a long snout. It looked at me and it looked like it was grinning at me. Its teeth were razor sharp and as white as a cloud. Its eyes reflected a bright yellow glow, most likely from my headlights. I wanted to floor it, but I swear to you, I couldn't even find the strength to move my toes. I was in some sort of state of shock, I guess. Not believing an inch of what my eyes were perceiving. It took me a bit too long to snap out of it. Finally, I punched the gas and got the hell out of there. I looked back in the rearview mirror and saw those eyes staring back at me as I sped down the road. I was so scared I was shaking. I got home, locked every single door and window, and sat down on my bed just thinking about what the hell I just saw. I know this sounds crazy, but I really think that I just saw a werewolf. I don't know what else it could have been. Honestly, I had a lot of trouble sleeping that night, and when I would get the courage to close my eyes, I swear I could hear something just outside. My eyes would whip right back open. This happened all night long, and I didn't get a wink of rest. The fear from the thought of that thing following me home just shook me to my core. I didn't tell my friends or family about the encounter. It was just too far-fetched. I didn't think they'd believe me. But unfortunately, my story doesn't even end there. I had more encounters with this thing throughout the next two years. One night, I came home from work and had to park in the grass as my dad had to leave for work early in the morning. I didn't want to block him in. I got out of my car and got all my things and then looked over to the left in the bushes and there were some very familiar eyes glowing at me again. This time I was outside, outside of my car I felt so much more vulnerable there. Again, we locked eyes, and my heart sank all the way to my toes as it let out this deep growl. I had to bolt for the door. I didn't want to see what would happen next. Thank God my parents had left the door unlocked for me as I was able to get in quickly. I locked the door and again made sure that all the other doors and windows were locked, and I could see that the figure was gone. I ended up being so scared that I changed my schedule at work the next day, telling them I didn't want to work late anymore. I was terrified that this thing could be stalking me, and obviously it knew where I lived. I didn't want to risk my life for a few nights a week just for minimum wage. I had some other small encounters every once in a while over the next year, with it looking in the window and whatnot, or I would see it staring at me outside. There was a time when I feared for my dog's life too. 
I let him out a few times at night, but now I don't let him out after the sun goes down at all. I don't even care if he pees in the house anymore. I hope you can understand just how scared this thing makes me. I took active precautions in my life to avoid being in its way, to avoid even a chance of seeing it. But even as careful as I was, I was terrified that it would break in the house one day. For all I knew, it may have already tried and I just didn't know it. I'm 18 now and I live in North Carolina. I attend the University of Carolina at Chapel Hill. I haven't seen the creature in a while now, and my parents actually sold the house that we were living in. I'm a lot happier, and I feel safe again. I'm 10 hours away from that thing now, so hopefully putting some distance between me and it will help as well. I just hope I don't run into another one up here, because you know there has to be more than one of them.